This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Bespoke Post. Head on over to bespokepost.com slash rogue. Use promo code ROGUE20 at checkout. Get 20% off your first order. I mean, I knew, in theory, there are two golden hours. <laughs> I so, just never thought I'd see both in the same day. It really takes this long, like. Oh yeah. Hey, you're looking at for brisket. Now, I kind of went on the smaller end of the actual beef. These are about nine pounds each. I've done 16, 17 pound briskets. Do you have to wake up even earlier? Oof, yeah. And use this like decommissioned Abrams tank. <laughs> now this <laughs> is a smoker, man. Texas original pits, uh, actually manufactured in Houston. Really cool machine, man. What is happening? Because I know you're supposed to put your finger over the carb when you inhale. <laughs> <laughs> you got your firebox, uber simple. <laughs> yeah. Firebox, your main cooking chamber. Okay. You got your fire here. Uh, vents here and vents here, so it's drawing the air, taking that hot air, bringing it into your smoke chamber. What's our fuel? Like, is it straight up charcoal or do we have wood? Charcoal and wood. Charcoal and wood, same like we did the other time. That's how I like to smoke. Is okay. it roughly the same proportions? Because last time when we smoked with the chicken and everything, we just used uh, just a few blocks of wood, but it was mostly charcoal. Same thing here? No. Uh, we're gonna go with a good bit more fuel because we got a lot of more, a lot more metal to heat up here. You know what I mean? So oh, I gotta get this want whole everything to be consistent temperature. Yep. Yeah. I wanna heat this whole thing up, get it stabilizing at about 220, 225, which is my favorite smoking temperature. Same, same temperature then. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. The little dials uh, do a good job of just saying like you are in smoke zone. Oh yeah. 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 Explain to me one more time the, the purpose of the fuel chamber being different from the cooking chamber. You want indirect heat. Okay not direct heat. Yeah. So say like how we want to sear a steak, mm -hmm. we want direct heat. Right. So with smoking, we want indirect heat, which is why we're going, we want our fire here and our food here. We don't want direct flame or heat or any kind of infrared heat even. So do you still have to finesse it to get it into the right temperature range like we did with the other grill? Absolutely. It all works off of airflow. Now, when I first built my initial fire, I had everything wide open. I had my vent here wide open. This is an actual door here that I can come in and, and refuel if I oh, need nice. to. I had it wide open so I can quickly heat up this metal. Then once I, I, I knew I was kind of getting there, I shut this off, okay? And I kind of set my vents to where I got a little bit more minimal airflow and that's going to regulate my temperature. So what is it about brisket that's so lazy? <laughs> uh, like, like wants to take 12 whole hours. Look, man, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it is a big hunk of meat, very fatty. Yeah. You want a lot of the fat to render so it can redistribute through the meat. That's going to give you that juicy, just melt in your mouth brisket. And you just keep it at 220, 225 for 12 hours? The entire and... time. Now, what happens when, I mean, right now it's 72 degrees, but uh, it's going to be over 100 degrees later today. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're going to have to keep an eye on? Or, oh, yeah. Or... Yeah. I have some some technology that's going to allow me to, you know, relax on, on the hammock or something like that and be able to have a sensor that's going to let me know if I drop below temperature. Yeah. It'll alert me. I come over here, stoke my fire, just make sure I'm cruising, you know, at, at 220, 225. Well, as it starts to get hot, how do you cool it down? You I would assume you, you, you choke it off. Yeah, choke just it off. Okay. the same like on the other one. You yep. have less, less oxygen. Yep. If I come around here and realize that, hey, I'm getting a little bit over my desired smoking temp, yep. choke it off. Once I'm dialed in and stabilized, I tend to not really mess with my exhaust vent too, too much. This is my main control that's closer to the fire. Got it. So it's quicker, a little bit more responsive. Uh, of choking off that airflow right where the fire is. Let's talk meat. How do you know what a good and bad brisket is? Typically with any beef, you're looking for good marbling. Okay, You know, lots of fat. Uh, lots of fat, which I tend to, I, I like to trim off some. Uh, any of the hard fat, the soft fat is, is fine. Now you don't want, man, you don't want an inch of soft fat. You still want to trim that down. But the soft fat is going to render, okay? 
Not now, that now, hard now, stuff. When you say render, I, uh, what does that mean? Man, you're, you're basically cooking it down. You know? Got it. You're, you're cooking it down, soaking back into that meat. There's going to be fat now, because where the where you have your flat and your point, there's a big chunk in there that's kind of in the center. That's kind of left in. Okay, I didn't separate them. I keep my brisket whole. Some people cook. Uh, some people will separate them, the okay. flat and the point, mm -hmm. and then cook those separately. It's not really my style. I like to do it all together. That's just going to make sure that that all of that fat gets well distributed throughout the entire thing. So at this point, uh, it looks like, according to the dials and stuff, we're in the smoke zone. Yeah. We have our heat source. I assume all of this is nice and hot. How long did it take for us to get to this point? Uh, about half an hour. Oh, great. Not okay, so 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 not not too long. Do we have to do magic seasonings or what? Uh, I like to do my brisket, which I call Texas style. I'm okay. not a Texas boy, but uh, salt and pepper, man. Yep, that's, that, that's yeah, it. Okay, we, that's what we hear. Yeah, uh, thick kosher salt. I kind of like a little bit more of a heavier grain, mm -hmm. black pepper. I guess we jump in, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at those tasty lasses. This is like the thing that tipped over Fred Flintstone's car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, of course, throughout the 12 hours, there will, I will need to refuel, add some wood to make sure I get some good smoke going. Right. Uh, but our main goal is just to, to keep these thermometers in the happy smoke zone. That's correct, yeah. Just salt and pepper, nothing fancy. No, nothing fancy. Of course, I did use a binder, a little bit of olive oil. Oh, okay. You know, just uh, kind of very light coating just so that uh, meat can sit here. Now look, I've had them sitting out about the entire time that I built the fire, about half an hour, which is totally safe. I mean, you can, you can feel them, they're still cold. Yeah. But again, I want that meat to kind of start sweating, draw in some of that seasoning. Now, I'm not gonna use this entire grill, okay? I'm gonna put them both kind of over here, closer to the fire. Okay. Because we don't want 20 hours smoke, you know? And I'm gonna put the fatter end closer to the fire. Okay. Okay. Now, now that's- So, so what happens as, as it sweats and the, the, and the fat comes out? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got a bucket check, over check here. Check out your, uh, your little drip tray there. Yeah, okay. Brian will be getting into that. There you yeah. go, yeah, oh yeah. Probably like, I'm gonna make some bread in there. <laughs> I'm gonna hook up a tap. <laughs> Man, at first, I'm probably not even gonna check in till three hours. Wow. I, I won't even open this here. Got it. If my temperatures are good, I'm not even checking into it. And, and I assume go. this gizmo is basically just to, to stoke the the coals over here, right? Or or, or pull the ash out. You okay. see how it's kind of rounded? Yep. Like that, so you just get Scrape in there, that out. Got clean it. that ash out. So a lot of it's visual with brisket, okay? I'm gonna check in. If this looks like it's just getting too dried out or anything, of course I'm gonna spray, like yeah. we did our ribs yesterday. And then I, I may rotate it if it feels like it's getting a little bit too crispy. Oh, okay. But nice. you're not going to be flipping it over on its other side? No. Okay. No. I cook it uh, fat cap up. Okay. What, what, uh, what are the biggest pitfalls that we should be watching out for? <laughs> pitfalls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pit. <laughs> you don't want too much heat, man. Okay. You know? Yeah. That's the only way to really mess it up. You'll dry it out uh, or, or, or even burn it. With an awesome grill like this, you have very low chance of burning because your fire's way over here. Now, I'm actually gonna close this thing because um, I am still letting a whole bunch of oxygen in here, probably getting that fire a little bit hot. So, yeah. This seems like something I couldn't screw up. I mean, no, I, it's like, I, I, like man, like, should I say I, that? I would never say that out loud. Well, I mean, <laughs> but but I I have that same understanding. <laughs> so look, man, with a with a machine like this, it's it's really hard to screw up. It's hard. If everything goes according to plan, and we just peek on it, what? How often do we peek on it, and how many hours uh, do we give it? I'm gonna peek on it at about three hours. Maybe every couple of hours after that. Maybe every hour. I don't know if it's necessary to check on it every hour, as long as you know that your temperature is good. Okay. Okay. Which is what my my little uh, thermometer is going to do for me if it sends me the alerts. One more question. Sure. I, I I know that we've got charcoal. I assume charcoal is charcoal, but but the wood flavoring that we have in there. What wood is? I'm it? using oak today. Oak. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Yep. Just kind of one of my favorite. A little bit more milder than say your hickory and mesquite. Also pretty readily available here yes. in Central Texas. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're off. Yeah, man.
Holy cow, what a day. Yeah. I woke up early. I said, do the brisket, went back to bed. <laughs> and now we get to eat brisket. Now we have brisket. <laughs> so explain to us everything that happened while we were tuned out. Sure. We're about uh, right at about a 10 hour smoke. I do remember uh, uh, 200 to 220 degrees, right? Right. 220 to 225 is my preferred mm -hmm. uh, smoking temp. Depending on what type of grill you have. Now this one, it's got some thick gauges, okay? It holds heat well. Yeah. It retains heat well. So uh, your swing, as in like go, dipping under 220 or 225 or going a little over is gonna be not as dramatic as something like this. So that's all about just building a relationship and learning the ins and outs of your particular smoker. Correct, like I said, learning your equipment and get it, yeah, getting intimate with it. I, I, I kind of like that. What are your moves uh, if, if you feel like something's going too far to one way or the other? Control it, but don't worry, okay? I think that's where a lot of your let's call it maybe intimidation of smoking comes from. It's like, oh, ho holy crap, I'm not on 225. Right. And that is okay. It's totally okay. Man, if you got a swing of, uh, you know, 15 degrees plus or then 15 degrees minus, it's nothing is going to mess up. But you still do of need course, to monitor it because it might go faster or slower, right? Monitor it and fix it the best you can, but don't freak out. So at what point did you know, like, it is done? Oh, I'd go to say maybe a, a, at the uh, eight to nine hour mark, I, I, I knew it was money. Look, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I did the, the thing, what, look, I touched it. I even maybe gave it a little slap. Okay, and, yeah. and with that, with with a brisket that I mean, we have, not for nothing, you were slapping it like like at hour one yeah. in the morning. Yeah, like that yeah, was the yeah. first thing we saw. I've <laughs> uploaded those clips to MeatHub.com, <laughs> and you'll see, man, it's it's got that jiggle to it, yeah. you know, and and man, that's what you're looking for. You know that it's it's loose in there. Yeah, it's it's moist and tender. Tell me this much: like the entire time that 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 we were off doing other things, how often are you peeking in to make sure everything's on track? So what I'm peeking in is my fire. I'm looking at my thermometer and I'm looking at my fire. I'm not necessarily peeking on the meat, okay? Because I don't want to let all that heat out. Right. I'm checking my temp first. My temp's a little low. I'm gonna check on my fire. Right. And adjust accordingly. I've added fuel probably about uh, every two hours, oh, maybe. Okay. You grab the brisket and, and, and we, what, wrapped it and... So I like to give a good hour rest mm -hmm. to it. So what I do is I'll lay out some butcher paper, I'll set my brisket down, I'll take my 50-50 apple cider vinegar and water spray, and I'll go ahead and spray that again while it's on the paper to keep moisture in there. Double wrap it, put it in the cooler so it's holding steam in there and it's keeping that moisture inside. Now, can I vape the steam <laughs> right now? Meat steam? <laughs> oh man, I, I guarantee it smells good in there. <laughs> so what temperature do you want the meat to be at? There could be a range that you're safe at. Now in the, uh, in, in the hardcore community of barbecuers, mm -hmm. there's 201. This is, okay. Okay, okay, this is where everybody yeah. starts having yeah. fist to cuffsmanship. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. what they think is perfect. Uh, yeah, okay. That's perfect. Uh, okay. And, and I'm, I'm on that team. You're on okay. team 201. I'm on team 201. Yeah. yeah. We're on team 202, <laughs> yeah. so. There you go. The trailblazer. Well, let me, let, me, <laughs> let me just prove to you the results. Okay. From 190 to 201 is when you want to start thinking about pulling it off, wrapping it, and letting it rest for an hour. What that does is that allows the juices, like, man, when you're cooking something, like the meats, it, it's tense, okay? Yeah. Stuff's going on in there, all right? When you rest it, it's resting, it's chilling, all right? It's, it's allowing those juices to redistribute through the meat, Right. okay? That's gonna give you that nice, juicy brisket that you want. Y'all ready to see it? That yes! I would, I would like very it. much to eat. Are you ready? I've been ready since 7 a.m., man. <laughs> so look, now what you're looking for, th this kind of really dark coloring here, mm -hmm. yep, we call yep, it yep. bark. Yeah. Okay? That's you're looking for that dark bark. And then, uh, you know. Look at that. And then the jiggle. The jiggle. Yeah. Typically when slicing brisket, now you got several different pieces of grain, okay? Running different ways. With beef, you always always want to cut against the grain. Okay. 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 That's going to give you your tender, your most tender bite. The point kind of, as you can see, runs this way. The flat runs a different way. Typically the easy way is just kind of go ahead right in the middle. 
there, okay? And just kind of separate it. Oh, so tasty. It's dripping. Yeah, yeah. So oh. That's kind of a money. Oh, oh. Shot oh, it's so tender. Oh, man. And you, I mean, please tell me you're smelling it, right? Yo, no, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's There's a good salivating. nose on it. It smells hints of post oak and pepper. I do want to show that smoke ring. Yeah. See how deep that is there? That's a deep smoke ring. We did, we did well here. What are the notes that you look for in a good brisket? Mm. I'm looking for wood, okay? I want that. I want that deep charcoal wood flavor that you really only can get from charcoal. From smoking, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And look, I want to add just a quick note. Typically this uh, flat part. Yeah. People will take this. You may have heard of burnt ends. Oh, yeah. 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 We'll kind of trim that up on the ends there. Maybe even toss it in some sauce. Maybe kind of put it back on the grill and almost, almost stew it. Okay. Okay. Ooh, you that know? sounds tasty. And it's, it, 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 it just falls apart in your mouth. It blows my mind how much of a difference the uh, the crispness of the outside makes combined with the juiciness and the tenderness of of the inside. It's a great there. bite. Yeah. You right. Know? You know, you got your texture of uh, like you said the crispiness of that bark. Okay. That mm. juicy, Bark. fatty, Bark. Uh, s soft stuff that just, just kind of breaks down and melts. Mm. Less talking, more meat. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, where can we find more about the Barbecue Guys? Barbecue Guys, you can look us up at bbqguys.com. Our website's got tons of product info, tons of recipes. Also, our YouTube channel, BBQ Guys, uh, on YouTube. Again, tons of uh, product knowledge, recipes. Also some cool entertainment where we do a little traveling and like this kind of stuff. Come mm. hang out with you mm -hmm. cool guys. Nice. Go check us out, man. Oh, ho, ho, ho. today is my favorite day of the month. It is Bespoke Post Day. You know Bespoke Post. It's a subscription club for guys by people who give a damn. You can preview your box. You can swap it. You can keep it. You can say no thank yous for anything. They're usually $45, but they are valued at over $75 or more. And we're going to find out what I got this month. Yes. First of all, timing could not be better. I am getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. So I'm gonna put on these unsimply stitched boot socks to cover my feet. Oh, that is tasty. Yeah, I feel like a lumberjack already. And line of trade, medium overshirt for yours truly. Here we go, here we go. I love that it's finally getting cold enough to wear this kind of clothes. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm feeling cozy already. In fact, I'm so classed up, I feel like I have to unclass myself here. I'm gonna put on these flip-flops. There we go. I'm gonna do the unthinkable. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I'm feeling it. All right, let's see what Jason got. <gasps> he got a bullseye knife throwing kit <gasps> a place to keep your throwing knives and a bunch of throwing knives <gasps> he's gonna love this there it is yeah <laughs> oh that's awesome I'm not gonna stab myself I'm not gonna stab myself I'm not gonna stab myself and I assume there's an actual bullseye kit here. And there is, oh, this is phenomenal. This is what I love about Bespoke Post. They really put a lot of thought and care into every package that they put together. And if you go to bespokepost.com slash rogue, use promo code rogue20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off your first purchase with Bespoke Post. You'll be able to look like a badass throwing knives and whatnot. That's right. Jason Murphy, I'm gonna play with your toys before you get a chance to. Hold on, look at this, ready? Whoops. <laughs> Jason, it comes with two knives. <laughs> Thespokepost.com slash rogue.
<laughs> See, I meant for it. I meant for it to do uh, like that. That was. It was gonna be really cool. I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> Who stuck this stuff up pliers? I like it. <laughs> I'll take it! That's, that's a good compliment. Yes. That's a good compliment. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. You want to high five the chef? I would be honored. Yes! There it is. One more. Boom! Boom. <laughs>